Chet seems very frustrated. The scenario you're dealing with is a distraught father who's recently lost his uh, son and his wife. I'm looking at something never seen before. New technology just unveiled by the Ohio Police Officers Training Academy, OPATA. What you're seeing now is what I'm seeing in my goggles with 360 degree vision. What you're watching is going to be two different perspectives of the officers that arrive on scene where one officer handles the situation one way and the other officer will then handle it a different way. Opata is overseen by the Attorney General. He's excited about pilot programs like this. Uh, I got to tell you, I, I went through one of them and it freaked me out how real it was uh, and the, the uh, fight or flight response that it uh, produced in me, even knowing I've got a headset on my, uh, on my head. The goal is to get every officer in the state into those goggles? Yes. 2% of annual casino revenue goes to law enforcement. That was $4.9 million last year. Of that, OPATA gets $4.1 million for training. Does Yost think that the legislature needs to give law enforcers a bigger piece of that pie? casino uh, issue is something I suppose could be revisited. There have been other ideas that have been floated uh, and are under discussion, but one way or the other, uh, I know that we have to find the permanent funding stream for police training. It's so important to our communities and our officers. Can you keep that funding going? Well, I'm fighting like hell to make it keep going. Uh, look, we need a permanent basis of funding. I, I asked for that in the last General Assembly budget. Uh, we didn't quite get there, although they did give us $40 million. Uh, we will keep that, that discussion going. So for long term, I agree with the governor and the attorney general. We need to find a permanent funding stream. Republican state rep Cindy Abrams, a former Cincinnati cop, just introduced legislation she thinks could keep funding away from the whims of the General Assembly. Uh, of course, the issue that passed uh, this week, issue two, the marijuana initiative, um, I'd like to take that $80 million to fund our law enforcement on continuing training. So $80 million of whatever revenue that's going to uh, get the state, I'm going to take that for law enforcement training. Recently, Yost announced a blue ribbon panel to reimagine police training. Part of his vision is to decentralize training like this, away from the academy in London take the goggles to the officers. Now we've got regional training partners at our local community colleges um, that provide training close to home uh, so that no officer has to drive maybe more than an hour to get to uh, a training and doesn't have to stay overnight. We're going to have this mobilized and we're going to bring it around the state to different locations um, to make it as accessible as possible. Right now, the state mandates training. Virtual reality is not part of it. Recently, Genoa Township PD Chief Steve Gamble showed me what is required for an officer each year. 24 hours of training, three hours of that of school threats, three hours legal update, two hours of arrest, search, and seizure training, 16 hours of training that departments can choose. Next year, the 24 hours will include two hours of de-escalation. Training like this, controlling a subject. Steve Gamble says for now, only the mandatory training is paid for. Well, we pay for the training. Um, we don't get any money from the state for training other than they reimburse us for the mandatory 24 hours of training they require every year. But above and beyond that, every agency has to pay the bill. That's a real burden for the smaller departments. Is that something that can be fixed? We're talking 24 hours worth of continuing training. Um, that's a fair amount. Lawyers have to get 24 hours every two years. Uh, so I, I think that this is uh, an excellent step forward. And um, candidly, with smaller departments, one of the biggest problems is not paying for the training. It's the fact that they don't have enough people to be able to take officers out of service. So. For now, Scott Spangler thinks putting officers in the picture by bringing the training to them is an exciting new vision. Here with the VR goggles, we're able to have it done. We can rotate through an entire shift of officers in 20 minutes time, and they're all going to experience the exact same training.